Hi, this is Charlotte with Living Inside Out Ministry. Welcome to another edition concerning faith. We talk about faith around here, but I tell you, Hebrews tells us without faith, it is impossible to please God. Impossible. So we want to have a good, solid understanding of what Bible faith is. What's Bible faith? Let's read our foundation scripture. It is James, who was a pastor, chapter 2, verses 14 through 26. We're going to run through this pretty quickly. The name of this is faith that profits. You want faith that profits. I want faith that profits. Verse 14. Now this is James, pastor. So he sees things through the heart of a pastor. What good is it, my brethren, if a man professes to have faith, and yet his actions do not correspond? Can such faith save him? Now, let me just say this. I've said it in every lesson, but I am compelled to say it again. This scripture has been taken out of its setting where it is and made it to sound like James is saying, well, now faith, uh, you can earn salvation through works. No, no. He is already talking to saved people. He calls them my brethren. So he's not referring to salvation like in, 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 the, in the manner that when we leave this earth, we go to heaven. Because there's so much more to the word salvation. It is total deliverance. It is total healing. It is soundness of mind. It is prosperity socially, financially, materially. And that this right here is where we uh, obtain that. Not in heaven, because there's no sickness in heaven, so we're not looking for healing in heaven. So remember that. Remember that. Suppose, and now James, Pastor James, uses something as an example. Suppose a Christian brother or sister is poorly clad or lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, I wish you well, keep yourselves warm and well fed, and yet you do not give them what they need. What is the use of that? Also, also faith, if it is unaccompanied by obedience, that is obedience to the word of God. And we're gonna find this. We're gonna prove this in the mouth of two or three witnesses obedience to the word, has no life in it so long as it stands alone. Nay, some of you, someone will say, you have faith, I have actions. Prove to me your faith apart from corresponding actions, and I will prove mine to you by my actions. You believe that God is one, and you're quite right. Evil spirits also believe this, and they do. And shudder. But idle boaster, see, this is somebody who goes around talking faith all the time. Well, let's see. You got any proof? Are you willing to be taught how it is that faith apart from obedience is worthless? Remember, James, he's a pastor. So he kind of gets right to the heart of the matter. Are you willing to be taught how it is that faith apart from obedience is worthless? My brethren, <laughs> take the case of Abraham, our forefather. Was it or was it not because of his actions that he was declared to be righteous as the result of his <clears throat> having offered up his son Isaac upon the altar? You notice that his faith was cooperating. See, he got an instruction from God. You notice that his faith was cooperating with his actions, and that by his actions, his faith was perfected, and the scripture was fulfilled, which says, and Abraham believed God, and his faith was placed to be his credit, to be to his credit as righteousness, and he received the name of God's friend. You see, you all see that it is because of actions that a man is pronounced righteous, 
Now he's not talking about the gift of righteousness that we all receive when we get born again. He's talking about being a doer of the word and continuing in a righteous life style. And we're going to see that in a minute. Stay with me. And not simply because of faith. In the same way also was not the notorious sinner Rahab. She was a harlot. Declared to be righteous because of her actions when she welcomed the spies and hurriedly helped them to escape another way. For just as a human body without a spirit is lifeless. See, I'll tell you what. If my spirit leaves right now, my body's just going to fall to the ground and be lifeless. So will yours. So also faith is lifeless if it is unaccompanied by obedience. Now, have you asked yourself, why isn't my faith profitable and somebody else's is? James 1, 21 through 23. Pastor James is speaking again. He's a pastor. He sees things through a different heart. Heart for the people. He's an under-shepherd. Therefore, the understood subject here is you. He's speaking to the church. James was written to the church, people. Therefore, you get rid of all moral filth and every expression of evil and humbly receive the word planted in you. Humbly receive the word planted in you. Well, when you plant something in the ground, you expect it to bring forth some fruit. Humbly receive the word planted in you which can save your souls. Here we go. Here's the difference. Now remember, James was a brother of Jesus. So we're going to go back to Matthew. And I'm wondering if James wasn't in this meeting when Jesus said something. James 1.22, Be doers, doers of the word, and not hearers only. Otherwise, you are deceiving yourselves. Now, we as Christians like to run around and blame the devil for everything that goes wrong in our life. Sometimes we even blame God. But you know, friend, God just, he's never wrong. The problem is never God. Sometimes we hear the word and we don't do it. And there is an unspoken expectation that God puts on us that when we hear the word, we read the word, we do it. We do it. Otherwise, we deceive ourselves. Can't blame the devil. For if anyone who hears the word but does not carry it out is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror. Then you put the mirror down and you walk away and you forget what you saw. Now let's look at this. James, brother of Jesus, he's an under shepherd, talking to Christians, speaking to the church. Here's a meeting that Jesus was holding in Matthew. I wonder if James was there because this sounds a lot like what James, Pastor James, is saying. Matthew, 20, uh, Matthew 7, 24 through 27, in the Weymouth translation. This is Jesus speaking. Everyone who hears these my teachings and acts upon them will be found to resemble, you know, to look like, a wise man who builds his house upon a rock, upon rock. And, his, and the heavy rain falls. This is heavy rain. Get a picture. Heavy rain. The swollen torrents come. So much rain that the water is now swelling. And the winds blow and beat against the house. 
yet it, the house, does not fall. For its foundation is on rock. Verse 26. Now Jesus is referring to a different group of people. Got a big contrast here. I want you to listen. And everyone who hears these my teachings and does not act upon them will be found to resemble, look like, a fool who builds his house upon sand. The heavy rain descends, same storm, same descriptive words, the swollen torrents come, rain, raining so hard we've got the water swelling now, and the winds blow, we've got some wind, and burst upon the house, and it falls. And disastrous is the fall. I wonder if James heard Jesus and was in this meeting. Wonder if James heard Jesus teach this. And perhaps that's where James got his teaching. James 1, 21 or 22, be doers of the word and not hearers only. Otherwise, you are deceiving yourselves. Now, I wonder if the person who heard the teachings and didn't act upon them, who was in this same storm, I wonder if they got mad at God and blamed God for the storm causing their house to fall? Or was it the storm that caused their house to fall? If it was the storm that caused their house to fall and the storm only, wouldn't both houses have fallen? There was something that the first person did that the second person didn't do, and it was the same storm. What is that? Well, Jesus said, everyone who hears these, my teachings, and acts upon them. Then he says, and everyone who hears these, my teachings, and does not act upon them. So we can't really say it was the storm. We'd have to say it was one obeyed. He heard the teachings of Jesus and acted on them. The other one heard the teachings of Jesus and did not act upon them. So it wasn't the storm. So have you ever asked yourself? I just don't understand that. Why in the world a storm came and, you know, the storms of life come and, you know, blow me apart and she seems to be untouched by any of it. Is it the storm? Or is it what you do with the word of God that you hear? Your response to the word of God makes all the difference in the world, my friend. Just like God leaves our free will intact and we can respond to his call, we can respond to the truth that he sent Jesus and we can respond to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ or we can maybe hear at Christmas the story of the birth of Jesus. Then at Easter, we hear about the death, the burial, and the resurrection. We hear those things. We do nothing. We don't embrace, humbly receive that word that would change our minds, change our soul. 
one responds to what God has already done through Jesus Christ. One rejects, walks away as looking through a mirror, puts the mirror down, walks away, and forgets everything he heard, everything he saw. No response to what God has already done. Does that make a difference? Yeah. You go to hell if you're not, if you're not saved. Is hell real? Of course hell is real. Yes. Is heaven real? Yes. Did Jesus Christ, did God already send the solution and now it's our turn to respond to the solution? Yes. Yes. And our response when we hear the word of God makes the difference in our life. It makes the difference as to whether our faith is profitable or not. The person Jesus talked about, everyone who hears these my teachings and acts upon them, that person can pray in faith, act like the word of God is true, do whatever action is required to shore up their home, whatever they have to do. The other one does nothing, does nothing, just walks away as though they heard nothing. It means nothing. And what happens? You have two different results. We often ask ourselves, why do bad things happen to good people? The Holy Spirit always warns us. That's part of who he is. Let's read something. In John chapter 14, 18 through 24. Again, the words of Jesus. I will not leave you bereaved. Now this is when he's talking to the disciples. And he tells them, I'm going to leave you. Well, that had to be devastating for them. And because he was their everything. I am coming to you, yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me, because I live. You also shall live. At that time, you will know that I am in my Father, and that you are in me, and that I am in you. He who has my commandments and obeys them, obeys them. He it is who loves me. Do you know you cannot go around saying you love God and disobey the word of God that you know about. We are held accountable for what we know. If you know the word of God says you were healed, stop saying I'm so sick. I'm just so sick. Faith calls those things which be not as though they were. The reason you're calling yourself healed is so your body can hear you and receive that healing. So Jesus is speaking. He it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him and will clearly reveal myself to him. We hear so many times. People who, oh, Jesus, show yourself to me. Show yourself to me. Here we go. What did he say? What did Jesus say? Keep it simple, people. Keep it simple. He said, if you keep my commandments, if you obey my commandments, I'll reveal myself to you. There you go. Isn't that easy? See how simple that is? Judas, not the Iscariot, if anyone loves me, replied Jesus, he will obey my teaching and my father will love him. Obey my teaching. And my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who has no love for me does not obey my teaching and yet the teaching to which you are listening is not mine, but it is the teaching of the Father who sent me. You see earlier when I said there are three who bear witness, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you notice how Jesus, first he starts out saying, I'm going to send you somebody else. Don't be, don't be bereaved. I'm going to send you somebody else. And he's going to bear witness to who I am, to you. And then he says, and the teachings that I have taught you, they're really not mine, they're the Father. See, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit always agree. In purpose, always agree. In character, always agree. But hear and obey my commands. Well, James is, and I wonder if James, I think James was here. And perhaps this is where he got the importance of being a doer of the word. And how easily we can delude ourselves if we hear the word, but we walk away and try to pretend like we didn't hear it. We delude ourselves, friends. We delude ourselves, deceive ourselves. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and every expression of evil. Lay it aside. You lay it aside. You already have the power within you to do it. All you have to do is align your will to what God wants for you, what Jesus has already done for you. And you'll find that grace has already accomplished what's right there for you to apprehend. Let's read Luke. The same, now this is how Luke saw what John, or heard what John heard. I will not leave you bereaved. This is Jesus talking, but this is through Luke's eyes. I am coming to you yet a little while, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me, because I live you also shall live. At that time you will know that I am in my Father, and that you are in me, and that I am in you. He who has my commandments and obeys them, he it is who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will clearly reveal myself to him. If anyone loves me, Jesus replied, he will obey my teaching and my father will love him and will come to him and make our home with him. He who has no love for me does not obey my teaching. And yet the teaching to which you are listening is not mine, but it is the teaching of the father who sent me. Now, we've been talking about faith that profits. We all want it, not only for ourselves, but we don't want to be the person whose house falls, whose life falls apart in the presence of everyone else, which makes that fall a disastrous fall. Many people who don't know Jesus Christ are watching you, are watching me, and they're asking, if, is there anything to all this faith and Jesus stuff, and is there anything to all this? And they're watching, hoping that you make that connection. Faith, obeying the word. They work together, which brings about a faith that is profitable not only in your life, but in behalf of other people in their life, until they can reach a place of maturity where they go and they do that with somebody else. Faith that profits. Earlier, we talked about, in our previous uh, four-part series, this fight is rigged. Well, it, sure, it is rigged. It is rigged. We don't ever fight the devil. We don't ever fight sickness. We don't ever fight poverty or lack. We fight the good fight of faith. And we do that through standing on the word and obeying the word. And as Jesus himself said, everyone who hears these my teachings and acts upon them. Then he further said, 
he who has my commandments and obeys them. Then James, who was the brother of Jesus, who was in the calling of a pastor, an under shepherd, he said, you, therefore, you, get rid of all moral filth and every expression of evil and humbly receive the word, that would be hearing and doing, the word planted in you which can save your soul. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. Otherwise, you are deceiving yourselves. Hearers only, not doers. When the storms of life come, your house will fall. You'll resemble a fool and disastrous will be the fall. But do what the word tells us to do. Be a doer and not a hearer only. And to that person, Jesus said, will I reveal myself to. This is Charlotte with Living Inside Out Ministry. If you have never made this Jesus Lord of your life, I ask you and invite you to do that right now. Just say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and I can't save myself. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Do something with my life so that my life can reveal you to a lost and dying world and will entice them to come to know you. Use my life for that. And from here on out, when I hear your word, I commit to obey it, no matter how hard it is on my flesh. In Jesus' name, welcome to your eternity, which starts right now. This is Charlotte with Living Inside Out Ministry.